What's up, everybody? What is going on? It is Saturday afternoon. It's almost four o'clock here in Wisconsin. And I figured I'd come hang out in the yard room for a while and work. I was out in the living room watching some TV, watching some Arca racing. And then that got over with. I was kind of just sitting out there. I figured, let's go in here and try to get this hat finished. I'm at the decreasing. I'm starting the decreasing round of the hat right now. So that's always a good sign. Started the hat early this morning. I need to get my Twitch page pulled up so I can get everything correct. Stream manager. That's what we want. It's been a gray, rainy Saturday here. But that's okay. I'm inside, so that's all that matters. It's not very warm today either. But I need to edit my stream info. Um, this is going to be makers and crafting. There we go. Updated. So there we go. All right. Ready to roll. Ready to knit. Three, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, fourteen, fourteen. Hey, welcome. Um, I'm still feeling wonderful. That hasn't changed all day today. So I'm still feeling the same as I was earlier today. Feel great. Just taking it easy around the house today. So just working on this hat, trying to get this hat finished. All right, first decrease round done, on to the second. Thanks for joining me this afternoon. You know, it's not my usual Twitch time, but I've got nothing going on today. So I figured I got a little lull in my boring day. So I figured I'd hop on here and hang out in here so I can get used to sitting in a desk chair for a while, so. You're coming here for a couple hours and just hang out and knit and do stuff in the yarn room. So hello and welcome to my Twitch channel. Hope you guys are having a great Saturday. Um, it's going pretty well here. I'm trying to see something. Ah, ah, I just lost the camera. Sorry, guys. Is that better? It'd be better there, I think. I don't know. Thanks for watching the channel. Maybe that is a better. I guess it is. It's gonna be the best I can do for now. I think. Problem is, I, I want to get a new webcam, but because of all of the everything with people working from home and social distancing, 
like the webcam market has been just like wiped clean. So really affordable quality cameras are really expensive right now. And Logitech, Logitech has like a camera that's just under $100 that right now, if you can find it in stock somewhere, it's like $200. So I'm just waiting for kind of the market to even out on cameras. So um, yeah, so this is, this is an old, this is a really old camera I'm using. Um, this camera is probably six or seven years old, I think, that I've got right now that I'm using. But they have a newer one out that I would like to get that was pretty common up until like February. And then they just disappeared because everybody was buying them. So, yeah, I think it's a C970, I think is what it is. Or a C920. What was it? I think it's a C920. I got to double check. It's a Logitech, but it's like the best, like good quality camera at a really good price. This one's a a good one, but this better. Yeah. Yeah, the Logitech C920. Um, is what I'm looking for, but... Have I worked on any dish cloths? No, I've not worked on any dish cloths. Sorry, I've been kind of recovering from surgery, so I haven't had a chance to sit down and do dish cloth work. The brain hasn't been focusing on that right now. So it's just been kind of simple knitting for me right now is what I've been kind of focusing on. So I am back. Hello, welcome, welcome, welcome. What is everybody up to today? What have you been doing to keep yourself busy? Welcome. Oh no. Yep, the healing is going pretty well, I feel. Um, just taking it easy, sitting around the house. I watched a little bit of YouTube this afternoon. Um, after the ARCA race got over with, I turned on YouTube for a little bit and watched. Um, what was I watching? Is it Pamela's Adoring Crochet? I think is her name of her channel. I think it's Pam's Adoring Crochet or Pamela's Adoring Crochet. Watch a couple of her videos. I feel like the camera is way too high for where I'm sitting. What are the thoughts on the yarn I'm using? I like it. It's a uh, it's a good yarn. I like it. Why is this like being weird?
Awesome. Thank you so much for knitting the pattern. Glad you enjoyed it. It's like cold here in Wisconsin today. I think that's good. We'll go with that for a while. You can see my messy desk. Yeah. This yarn is Alpaca Dance from Premier Yarns. I got it a couple years ago, I think. And it's an acrylic um, alpaca blend. Super duper soft. I really, really enjoy it. So. Got a bunch of it for super cheap. It's just been a gray, rainy day here. Um, let's see what the temperature is. Hey, welcome. Weather. It is 63 degrees here right now. Wow, so it's supposed to get up to 82 tomorrow. Pretty comfortable week all week. Mid to upper 70s all week. I'll take that. Perfect. What details couldn't you get through on the video? Was the audio bad on the video? If it is, I can redo it. So I thought I listened through it pretty well. I thought the audio was pretty clear on the video, so. Oh, there was nothing squeamish about. I didn't go into any like really details about it. It just covered the basics. It's no difference than cutting up. I guess I should explain it like the doctor explained it to me in the office. It's like, you got three layers of socks and they cut the outer two layers of socks is what they did. But you need to toughen up. You need to be a stronger person. It's important to be strong. Words can't hurt you. Woohoo, this hat is flying off my needles. I love it. I like the colors of this hat. Looks pretty cool. Nice and soft. So I like this one. So so soft, you guys. Just pet this. It's so soft. What yarn did you cake up? What project do you have starting?
Oh, I just realized something. I need water. Yay for old stash. I haven't checked out her video yet. I didn't really watch much YouTube videos the last week and a half, two weeks. I just, my mind wasn't in it. So I kind of just stayed off of YouTube for a while. A lot of, so I pretty much was off of social media for a while. I felt like just kind of just kind of like, like lurking, and that's about it. But finally feeling better and getting more active on that stuff. So watched a couple videos last night on YouTube, or no, this morning, and then a couple more videos this afternoon on YouTube. So slowly getting back into it. I'll watch whatever videos YouTube recommends from the ones I missed while I was away. So. Come on, I'll just open up YouTube and see what YouTube recommends for me, and I'll click on one of those videos, and that's about it. I don't usually dig through my subscription list and see what's new. I just kind of like, okay, that looks like a new video that YouTube's recommended. Let's watch that. Let's watch that. Let's watch that. I kind of whatever after whatever autoplays afterwards as well. I kind of watch as well. So just let YouTube do all the work for me. I'm lazy. Yeah, she had some knitting projects she brought with me. I didn't do a lot of knitting while I was like recovering and before the surgery. I just wasn't in it mentally. So I didn't really do a lot of knitting until I think maybe Thursday night into Friday. I did a lot of knitting. Before that, I was just kind of like I'd pick up a row, do a couple stitches, put it down, do a row or two, put it down. This guy wasn't really like mentally there. My mind was on other things.
So I keep on forgetting to get water. I'll be right back. Oh, you're welcome. I, um, yeah. See, yeah, there's how I feel about the current event stuff. I've got my own opinions. You guys have your own opinions. You don't come to my channel to get your opinions changed on that stuff. So um, there's no point in me like lecturing you on how to live your life, how to do the things you're supposed to do to make me happy. It's like, that's somewhat I'm on this for. So you're not going to see me like lecturing you how to live your life. Unless if it deals with yarn. So if it deals with yarn, I might get involved. <laughs> but other stuff, I feel the same way when I scroll through Facebook and Instagram. I just see people just going on and on and on. It's like, okay, Good for you for yelling out loud on social media, but it's more important what you do in real life outside of the social media, like clout world, that's more important. So I do stuff outside of the social media stuff that do take care of things that I am support and I'm like really passionate about, but I'm not going to like jump on social media and just like throw it down your guys' throat. That's not what it's for. So yeah, that's why you don't see me touch all those topics that other people do because that's not what I hear. That's not what I'm here for. That's not what I'm here for. Oh, I can't get it out right. Awesome. Thank you, Tammy. Oh, the rain is back. I do like um, these like daytime rainy days where I can just sit in here and hear the rain. And it's just, like, it's so relaxing. It's like, oh, I like this. I love these mugs. I'd be happy to send the rain your way because we have enough rain right now and my grass is going to grow and I don't want it to grow for a while until I'm more rested up. But If I do need my lawn mowed in the next couple of weeks, my friends have offered to mow the lawn for me. So I'm going to have to take them up on that offer. We'll see. Or I just let it go long for a couple of weeks. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm not about the conflict or stress either.
We had some heat on Tuesday and Wednesday. It got up into the 80s, I think, maybe close to 90, but it wasn't very bad. The humidity wasn't as nearly as, as bad as they were like predicting it to be. It's like, oh, great. Because when my surgery was originally going to be Thursday, it's like perfect. Like that, the week adapter works is going to be nice and cool. It's like perfect weather to like recover with. Then it got changed to Monday and I saw the temperature for Tuesday and Wednesday. Like, oh my gosh, that's going to be just miserable to sit in the house with no AC and have to like just like sit there in the heat and recover from surgery. But then it ended up being a lot cooler than, or actually felt cooler than what they expected it to be. So, um, so it wasn't bad at all. This is a knit round. I would say I'm not a yarn collector. I'm a yarn preserver. Because, you know, some of these yarns don't last around forever. So it's good to capture them and hold on to them. So when you want to go back in the past, it's like, oh, look at this yarn from three years ago. You can't find this anymore when at the point, at that time, you could find it all over the place. So much yarn. Or a yarn historian. I like I think that's better. A yarn historian or archivist. I'm a yarn archivist. I like I like that title. Yarn archive yarn archivist. A yarn archive. It's a tongue twister. Yarn archivist. Or a yarniologist. That's kind of fun, a yarniologist. I'm a yarniologist. I study yarn. I think that's gonna be my title.
I should. I think I'm gonna throw that in my Instagram profile right now. <laughs> I I think a yarniologist sounds more professional. A yarn connoisseur just sounds like you're somebody that likes to likes to sip on the the yarn, like a wine connoisseur. You're a yarn connoisseur. You're like, oh, why is she talking? I think she wanted to set like an alarm or something. She's like, for what time? I'm like, huh? What? Let's see here what I'm trying to do.
All right, so I have updated my Instagram profile to have my new yarn title as a yarnologist. So let me show you guys. I don't know if it'll show up on the screen, but there we go. Ross, a yarnologist. Bam. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. And I got to figure out how I can spin that into more things. So. so for lunch today i made some macaroni and cheese and it was actually pretty good i used a box mix from aldi and i was pleasantly surprised with it and the best part is i had no troubles eating it it just went right down boom perfectly and then for dessert i got dairy queen this afternoon I went for a little drive after lunch today, and I went to Michael's, and then after Michael's, I went to Dairy Queen. I got the Cotton Candy Blizzard. That is good stuff, I have to say. Um, <laughs> so I think... It would just be yarn specialist because yarnology is also already kind of like saying your specialty is yarn. So certified yarnology specialist like is kind of like a double saying it twice. It's like I'm a double yarn yarn. So or I'm a yarn yarn. Um, so it's a certified yarn specialist. I think is good. Yeah, I got a few things at Michael's. Um, They got some, let me go grab it for you guys. I did buy yarn. And some other things as well.
the yarn I bought. They call this baby yarn, but really it's not baby yarn. It's just a number three lightweight yarn, but it's the cozy baby. It's 70% acrylic and 30% polymer. It is super soft. It's 200 grams, 557 yards. I bought this to make hats because I thought I'd make some really cool hats with this yarn. So this was on sale for like $6. It's regularly $10. So I got this color here called Aspen. And I got this blue color called Sierra. And then this like reddish pink color called Oahu. I figured those would make nice hats. So I got some of those. And I have to say of all the yarn that like Michaels has right now, that's like the only thing that really appealed to me. All the other stuff was kind of like, eh, leave it. Then I got some other fun craft things. These were on sale for like 70% off. So I got some of these. I've done these before and they're fun. Um, they're these little like ceramic. You paint them yourself and then like put them in the oven to bake. So I got this like little um, cup. And I think these were like. These were 70% off, so it was like $4 regular price. So what you're looking at, 40 cents times three is $1.20. So like this was like $1.20 for each kit. It's so like, figure out, let's get some of these. Fun little project to do this week while I'm off of work. So what I got was this just like little, kind of like a little wine cup or whatever you want to do. You got kind of a good bathroom cup, I think. And it comes with the paints. So I got one of these cups, then I got two little flower pots. And the last thing I got was this little like ceramic stein. I thought that looked kind of fun. So, do some paint sometime. I've done a mug like that before a few years ago, and it's a lot of fun to do. So figure it'd be a fun little project to work on. Do some painting, getting messy. Um,
Yeah, the sale I think goes through the twenty fifth. I know it started yesterday, and I think it goes through, uh, or is it the twenty seventh? I'm not sure. But it's their lowest price of the season sale going mm -hmm. on. So they had impeccable and charisma on sale for a dollar ninety nine a ball, which is a pretty good price for that yarn if you need it. I've got so much of it already in my stash. It's like, I don't need more impeccable or charisma for a long time. So what's that? Um, I haven't checked out the craft area of my Walmart lately. Um, I was there for the first time since like February. Um, we went there. What day did we go there? Was it Wednesday or Thursday we went there? I went there with my mom to get some things. It must have been... Or was it Tuesday night? It might have been Tuesday night we went. Um, but I didn't go to the craft area. I just kind of, we just did the groceries and uh, the health and beauty area just to get some stuff I needed here at the house. So.
All right, sorry. Too much blabbing on my phone. Yeah, I don't think I I could ever like live outside of like a a city area because I've always growing up I've always been live used to living to something like retail close by. Um, as a kid, I lived with a Walmart and Kmart right down the road from where I lived. And if I wanted to go to a place like Michaels, or actually back then it was Lee Ward's. Um, if I wanted to go to Lee Ward's or Frank's nurseries and crafts or what other places were back then i don't know those are like the two main craft places lee wards and frank's um those were in lansing which was like a 15 minute drive from where we lived um, then when i moved to kalamazoo again all those places were within minutes from where i lived and when i moved to wisconsin those places are still within minutes from where i live so i, I always i like having that like retail connection close to where i live of course now we have amazon where you can order something and have it here the next day if you really need it that fast so that's always nice
enjoy the feather and fan pattern. It's super, I'd say it's a pretty easy knit. And it's a very cool looking knit when it's done. So it's it's worth the, the extra few stitches you have to put into it. It's well worth it, I feel. I'm too, you said the committee said if you need, if you're like you're working on something and you need a, something to finish a project, it's like a five minute drive. I'm used to that. So I can't imagine that like having to drive an hour to get something and then drive another hour back just to do that. It's like, I can't, man. I couldn't do that, I think. So the project I'm knitting is scrolling along the bottom of the screen. It's my, one of my hats. So I'm doing the worsted weight or the medium weight version and a Premier Yarns Alpaca Dance yarn in the color, I think Piazza is, I think that's what it says. So Ross hat, number four, medium yarn um, and Premier Yarns Alpaca Dance Piazza. So I try to have the project I'm working on scroll along the cross to the bottom of the screen so people can always see what I'm working on at the time so they don't have to Keep on asking. Makes it easy for everybody. Mm. I don't need to worry about yarn stores, to be honest, because I can just turn right around and boom, yarn store. It's like I was joking with my mom, and she she brought, I think, two projects with her? Yeah, she brought two projects with her. One she was almost done with, and the second she was going to start. Um, and I told her, well, if you run out of yarn for either of those projects or you want to do something else, that is not the reason. Or if you want to do something else you don't have yarn for, you're welcome to go down the basement and choose whatever you want because there's plenty down there. So and then, and then there was, I think, was it last week one day? Because I had to work 
because I was originally supposed to be off Thursday, Friday last week for my surgery, then off all this past week. But then my surgery got bumped to Monday of this past week. So instead of taking Thursday, Friday off the week before, I end up working those two days just so I could use the vacation days at another time. Um, well, my mom was already on her way here. So when I went to work Thursday and Friday, she was still here at the house. And I guess she went down to the basement one of those days. And I got home, she's like, I went down to the basement. Like, are, are all those totes on their yarn? I'm like, uh, most of them. I think she said she counted like 77 totes. And I go, well, they're not all yarn. Some of the stuff down there in those totes is not just yarn, but a lot of it's yarn. So I guess I have like 77 totes of yarn or close to 70 some totes of yarn in the basement that I didn't realize. Because when you have them stacked up, it's it's a small area. But what I did is before my surgery, I went downstairs and unstacked all the totes. So they're all like one level. So if I need to get to a certain tote of yarn, I just have to bend over and open it up. I don't have to like unstack it and move stuff around because... I can't lift more than 10 pounds. All those totes are definitely way more than 10 pounds. So I have them like all like sprawl out around the basement just so I can get to them easily. And yeah, apparently there is like 77. I don't know if she came in the yarn room or not. She didn't make a comment about it. So maybe she didn't come into the yarn room because it's pretty, it's really messy in here. This is like the one room I didn't get a chance to clean before she got here. Um, I just kind of ran out of time, but it is a mess right now, but oh well. It's my Yarnology laboratory, so it's going to be messy. I have a messy lab. I am doing wonderful. Thank you for asking. I am doing great. So surgery went very well. I am feeling great. I can eat again and get a full feeling in my stomach, which is awesome. So life is very good right now. So how are you? Well, the good thing is you made it here for this afternoon's chat. So yay, thank you for coming by. Actually, I should get supper warmed up or just get started in my hot logic. I made some angel hair pasta last night, so I'll have that, all the leftovers for that tonight. So I realize I'm eating a lot of pasta right now, which that's totally fine. I I need as much of it as I can get. So, yay me. Um, I think I mentioned it in the YouTube video I posted today, but yeah, I weighed myself right before the surgery and I was down to like 130 pounds. 
So that is just like not good at all. I need to be like at 165, 170. Um, I'd say what like 165 is kind of like my ideal weight where I want to be, or maybe like 160, 165 range. So I need to put on like 30 or so pounds. Oh, I thankfully the recovery for the surgery is actually pretty, or for me, it's been pretty easy. Um, I mean, I had surgery Monday morning and by like Monday evening, I was up walking around the hospital room and like walking around the hospital floor I was staying on. So I was walking around that night. So, um, just got five little cuts on my belly that I got to make sure those heal nicely, which so far they're doing pretty well. So yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's been a pretty good recovery for me, I feel like. I was able to eat the next day, no problems. So. I have, to, I have to stick with soft and liquid foods for six weeks. Then I can kind of transition into more. What's the word? What is like the kind of word I want to say? More textured foods, I guess. So, or foods with more structure. I don't know. So yeah, thank you everybody for all the positive thoughts and stuff sent my way. I appreciate it. So yeah. It was a huge letdown when they postponed it on me because I was so ready for it. Just like because it it takes a lot mentally to like prepare yourself for I'm having major surgery. They're gonna cut me open and cut parts of me up and it's like, I'm not sure what's going to happen and what they're going to do. So it's like, I don't know what's going to go on. And then, um, and then once you finally are, okay, I'm ready for this. They call you and say, like, yeah, your surgery's going to happen tomorrow. It, it might happen Monday. We have to get more tests done from you. I'm like, oh my gosh. It's like, oh, it's like, you can't be serious. It's like, yeah, there's no way you can go in the operating room without having a, COVID swab test results in your paperwork. So I had to get a COVID swab done for the second time at the end of the week. That time, the person doing the swab, she went way into the nose. Like she was digging for buried treasure somewhere. And I she must have found it because I checked my patient portal app the next day and my test results for COVID swab were in there. So I was like, good, they've got swab results. I should be all good for Monday. So then I called Sunday night to when they see my report time. And they told me, 6.15 Monday morning, report to the hospital. Like, okay, it's happening. And it happened. So very happy. Very thankful it happened. Very grateful it happened. My doctors were awesome. I had awesome nurses taking care of me. It was just, it was a good experience. Yep, my mom stayed here the whole time. She got here Wednesday before my original surgery day, and she left this morning. So she was here for like a week and a half. So it was nice having her here. And now that she's gone, you guys have to keep me company. So sorry, you guys. You're stuck with me now.
And she just got home. Wow, that's a fast drive. Yes, I did watch the race on Sunday. Um, I watched all the races. So, what was there? There was the four races from Homestead on Saturday and Sunday this past, last weekend. And then before that, there was the Martinsville race Wednesday night. And then today I watched the ARCA race from Talladega. And then I think, actually, I think there's a NASCAR race on very soon. I got to double check that. I totally forgot about the Xfinity race. No, I don't want Xfinity Star, I want Xfinity race. Ooh, it's on now. Yee, yee. Yeah, I totally forgot about the race. Oh, that rain delay was crazy for the NASCAR race last weekend. I mean, it's it's good they're being safe with the lightning, but it's like, I swear, like, every 30 minutes, like, boom. Here's another lightning strike. Boom. Another lightning strike. It's like, oh, my gosh, you guys. Okay. I got to get the old race turned on on the telly here so it'll be playing on picture but you guys won't hear it because i'll have it muted so i'll just be watching the picture watching the picture show watching the picture show oh i only missed the first 18 laps not much I think it's probably, maybe it's a different Tammy on Facebook you're seeing pictures of. <laughs> wow. Four cars wide. That's crazy.
<laughs> it's all good. Oh, thank you very much, Rossi. Thank you, thank you, thank you. What is that pink bag? Be cool. Is that a small bag? Yeah. So this bag behind me that you see, um, I got this on AliExpress. I'm not sure when. But it says it's just like a little, I think it's supposed to be like a little makeup bag. But I got like a little tool bag. It says no llama drama, be cool. And I have my um, fingering weight hat supplies in here. But I'm actually going to swap out. I'm not going to use this bag anymore. Um, when I was at Michael's today, I saw these canvas bags. that I Are, are they canvas or are they polyester? I can't remember what material they are. Um, um, so... Michael's had these little bags right here. I think they're like $4 each. Yeah, $4. And they're polyester pouches, it says. Oh, you can do sublimation on them if you want to, but I'm not going to. For sublimation or heat transfer vinyl. Cool. Oh, well. Anyways, they had these funnel designs on them. It's so, like there was this one with like the like pink tropical flowers. There was one with the little flamingos. They had this one here that has like the turquoise and tropical flowers. And then they got this one right here with the black and white and like the green tropical leaves. So I figured these would be actually perfect for my hat bags for the tools instead of having like different random size bags. So like I had this bag here for the figuring weight hats. I've got this bag here for the bulky weight hats. I got this bag here for the number three weight hat. So it's like, let's do all the same style bag and just have the different bottoms kind of like be the marker for the different kind. So, so yeah, so this is my worsted weight. I think this will probably be fingering weight. This will probably be like number three weight, and this will probably be number five weight hats. I don't know. But then I'll have everything in there for each size hat and all ready to go. So, yeah. Yeah, these are kind of fun. Um, so, yeah. I thought these were on sale, but they didn't ring up on sale, and I wasn't going to cause a scene it's like a couple extra bucks i need them well i don't need them but i wanted them and four dollars still for a bag that size i don't think is too bad and it's a pretty nice quality bag as well so Oh, I got to get dinner started. I'll be right back.
All right, I'm back. Oh. Why don't you guys remember to go to the bathroom while I was up? That is, sorry, I was thinking of myself about a TV commercial I just saw. I was like, that doesn't make sense. But you guys didn't see the commercial and you have no idea what I'm referencing in my head. So, oh, the voices, the voices in my head know what's going on. I have not done my videos for the Mary Max kits yet. So. I might do them later tonight. I might do them tomorrow. I might do them into the week. I don't know when I'll record them, but I will record them. Um, I have opened them up so I know what's inside of them. So you won't see like my initial reaction to unopening them. But I'll still like go over what's inside the kit and what I think of them. Which I have to say I like what I got this month. So I got the Knit Club like I usually get. Plus I also got their first Afghan of the Quarter Club or whatever they're calling it. So. Um, yeah. I'm not a fan of the Afghan pattern itself. I like the yarn, but I did find another pattern I might use instead with that yarn to do my own kind of thing, um, which I'll probably talk about in the video. Share the pattern I found I think would work good because, yeah, I'll just talk about it in the, during the video. Oh, oh. I like I need a nap soon. I mean, I definitely could use a nap because I've been up since like 4 a.m. And that's when I started this hat. So the hat's been on the needle since like 4 a.m. this morning. So the born on time for this hat was 4 a.m. Or around there. It might have been a little bit later than that. So 
always fun to see how the pooling changes once you get up to the decreasing. So this one changed a little bit. It's so soft. That halo on this yarn is just out of this world. And the softness is just so nice. Uh, it's really nice yarn. And I want to say, I feel like I paid like less than or right around a dollar a ball for this yarn, I feel like. The price was, I know, crazy. I want to say it was like, it was like $9 for 10 balls or $10 for 9 balls, I feel like. I want to say maybe it was $10 for 9 balls a yarn. It was when Premier had like the crazy like clearance sale where like they had bundles of stuff for like super cheap. I see Premiere was selling some mystery bags of yarn. Was it this week or end of last week? Did anybody grab some of those? Was it like, was it $10 for 500 grams? I feel like was the price or right around there. I didn't grab any because I, I didn't need, I don't need yarn. So I was like, nope. I don't need to get any mystery stuff right now like that. <laughs> I'm still buying yarn here and there when I see something that's like, okay, those will make good hats. Let's buy those. And but that's pretty much what the only thing I'm buying yarn for right now is to make hats with. Hats and dishcloths, about all I want to knit right now. An occasional scarf here and there. When the yarn doesn't really, okay, you just, you're not yarn that could be a hat or anything, so you're going to be a scarf is kind of how I look at stuff right now. But my problem with knitting scarves is like you get to a point where it's like, okay, this is just so boring and repetitive it's like it, it it just needs to stop soon it's like oh i still got half a ball of yarn oh my gosh this is never going to end like the scarf i was working on this past week i was like i would i finished it yesterday i think and like i told myself i couldn't eat lunch until i finish this um 
what was it? I just lost my train of thought. Like I could I couldn't eat lunch till I finished the scarf because I needed to get I had like maybe like a dozen rows left of it. And I was like, I knew I was gonna get done. But it's like I just wanted to get it done before I did anything else. I was like, I'm just plowed through and finished it, then I got to eat lunch. But even the patterns that aren't boring, just like with scarfs, like doing the same thing, repeating the same rows over and over and over and over again. It's like, okay, yeah, it's like, ah, just hurry up and get over with. I want to do something different now. Oops, you do a knit together right there. Two, four, six. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Am I already at the. Something's not right here. I did it knit two, two together twice in a row in that section. Ugh. That's. Oh, I just realized something. These bags can do the sublimation on there, the heat transfer. And I think I got heat transfer vinyl from my Cricut machine when I got it. I can make little Cricut things for this, and I don't know. I'm not that. I'm not feeling that ambitious. Let's be honest. Just for a second, folks, I gotta take a phone call. Hello?
<laughs> okay, I am back. So, my mama called me. Let me know. She said she was home and getting stuff unpacked and all that stuff. So, I'm just going to just knit these stitches because I messed up previous rows. Switching to DPNs on the hat. Kentucky Fried Chicken sounds so good. Ah. Oh, it does. Everything sounds really good to me right now at this point. Um, I can't wait till I can eat it all again soon. The good thing is I can eat now, so I don't need to count down days. Because I can actually eat a lot of food right now a lot easier than I could before. Um, but there's still like certain foods I need to stay away from until I get the all clear from the doctor. So I'm not going to start counting those day, down those days because still when I do get the all clear, I'm not going to rush into things because that's just going to be not good. Um, will I be on solids by the 4th? Nope. I won't be able to do solids probably until like first of August, into August at that point, because it's six weeks on soft and liquid foods. So I still got ways to go before I can eat like hard solid foods. I mean, I can eat solid foods now. These have to be really, really soft. Um, pretty much like they said, it's got to be able to fit through the size of like a drinking straw. You have to kind of picture that in your head. Um, just so I don't damage anything while it's healing in my insides. So. And when I do get the all clear, I'm still not going to rush into stuff. Uh, it's like the one question everybody keeps on asking me, that I just get like really, really just like fed up getting asked like, what's the first thing you're going to eat? I don't really know. I don't really think about that. It's just like, it's really frustrating getting asked that question over and over and over again. It's like, I'll eat whatever I feel like at that moment, but it's like, do people plan their meals out two months in advance? 
It's like, I don't even know I'm going to eat like three hours later in the day. So let alone expecting to know I'm going to, what, I, what I want to eat like two months down the road. That's not going to happen. I don't function that way. It's like, oh, you know what? This bag of oyster crackers sounds really good. That might be the first thing I eat oyster crackers. So who knows what it's going to be. It's just going to be whatever, like at that moment, like what my stomach says, you know what? Let's go for that. So. So it's like, ugh. So picture being on liquids for six months. So what are oyster crackers? They're little like, um, are they octagon shaped crackers that you put in soup or are they hexagon shaped? I think they're hexagon shaped, but they're little round crackers you put in like soup. So I like to eat those, snack on those. What am I knitting? If you look down below the screen, on the bottom of the screen and scrolling across the bottom. I'm currently knitting the Ross hat number four worst or number four medium. Yarn is Premier Yarns, Alpaca Dance, color is Piazza. I have all my project information scrolling along across the bottom. So you don't need to wait for me to answer the what am I knitting question if you guys ask that. Just try to give me like a heads up. Just put there for you guys to read. So read the words. They give you the answers. Reading is power. What's really good is um, taking oyster crackers and putting like some oil on them, then putting like ranch seasoning. That's really good. Or different kind of seasonings. Just sprinkle that over top of the oyster crackers and kind of like make like a little snack mix. I love doing that. I can't wait to do that again. It's one of my favorites. I think the last time I did, I did it in the crock pot and like I put like, was it like a stick of butter? I melted butter with the oyster crackers in the crock pot along with like the ranch seasoning. just kind of like randomly stirred it every now and then. And then like once everything got melted and coated, I like laid it all out on um, like a cookie sheet to dry and it was so good. Oh, I love it. Cause then you can season it however you want. So if there's like a certain seasoning you like that you don't usually see available in stores on snack stuff, you can make your own snack mix. God, you guys, I cannot wait to get in the kitchen and just play with the food and eat all the stuff. Oh, I can't wait for that. Oh, I can't wait at all to get playing with all my kitchen tools again and gadgets and uh so not only do I love to knit and diamond paint. I love to play around with kitchen gadgets and make things. So I've been missing that a lot lately. Just like, ugh, be able to make different foods and try them out. And oh, I miss all that so much. So can't wait to get back into doing that. Yep, they, they've given me a list of what I can and can't eat right now. And I know from reading what others experience with the surgery is there's still certain foods after the 
surgery that you still might have trouble eating. You just kind of have to keep track of it yourself and like, okay, yep, this food works for me. This food doesn't work for me. This one works. This doesn't work. You just kind of have to keep a mental note in your head, like a little journal of what foods are good and not good to eat. So, yeah. Yeah. Back in the day when there was Top Chef Just Desserts, uh, my friend, one of my friends and I would get together every week and watch it. And every week I'd make a different dessert. Um, cooking videos? No. Don't look for cooking videos, you guys. Again, I'm not a tutorial channel. I don't have the time or stuff to do tutorial videos like that or how-to videos. Um, you might see me mention something I make. I might do something in the kitchen that's already made and show it, but I'm not going to sit down and do, oh, here's a step-by-step -step video. That's no. I mean, I work, when I'm working, I work 50 plus hours a week and I got other things I got to do that I don't have time to do that. YouTube videos pay me nothing. So I'm not going to put a lot of effort into something that doesn't pay me anything in return. Got something fun to do? Yeah, I'll do it, but I'm not going to like make these spectacular, elaborate videos. No. Um, I'm thinking going back to work on the 20... That car is pit backwards. Okay. Um, the 29th of June, I think, is when I'm going back to work. That's what I have told them. I'm on the schedule for that day. Possibility I could go back earlier than that. Um, I'm feeling actually pretty good. I mean, if I was crazy enough, I would go back to work Monday. But I know I need a few more days off. Just kind of get my body back in action. So I'm thinking probably the 29th will be my return date to work. Who knows? It could be sooner. It could be later. It all depends on what the body says. Can't predict what's going to happen a week from today. I'm doing great. And the good thing is this hat's almost done. Okay. 
Gotta finish this hat. Gotta finish this hat. Gotta finish this hat. Should be done in a few minutes, hopefully. Hello, welcome. When I finish this hat, I can have dinner. When I finish the hat, I can have dinner. So just a few more stitches. That's the point where the decreasing is almost done. Four. Go. Boom. Almost there. Three. Ah, ah, ah. Before my surgery, I dropped about 35, 40 pounds, which was way too much for me to lose. It was down to 130 when I'm usually about 170. I'm doing great. I'm almost done with this hat, and then it's going to be dinner time for me. Got some angel hair pasta heating up for dinner, so can't wait to eat that. All right, I've made the last round. Yeah, I lost a lot of weight. Um, I had an issue, a condition called aclasia, where I couldn't get food to my stomach. That's why I lost weight. So I had to go to the doctors and get surgery to get it fixed, which I did that. Finally had surgery on Monday. So I'll be able to put the weight back on. So. I know I was losing weight. I didn't like it. And then the doctor fixed it for me. I just got it fixed, so I should be able to put weight back on now. I wasn't losing weight by choice. Trust me, I don't want to be skinny.
Uh, 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 I'm going to lose a stitch, lose any gold. Kept it. Awesome. All right. Just a couple more stitches in this hat. We'll be off the needles. I don't really use cone yarn that often. The only time I've used cone yarn was for dish cloths. And I just keep it right on the cone. I'll see it. There's no sense in taking it off the cone when you can actually work with it right from the cone. So there's, I'm one for not doing more work than needed. So I know if there's extra work involved, I usually avoid it. And I just try to do as little as work as possible to do something to get it done. So I don't yarn, wind yarn off the cone to knit with it when I can knit with it right from the cone. Okay, five and five, awesome. So now I can cut the yarn. Here's Jeb. Need to get some better little needles or little scissors. All right, there's that. Stitch markers can go in the bag. There is my yarn needle. Have I done a one row scarf? I think, I think, what's it called? Is it like the scrunchable scarf? I think that was a run row pattern. I I honestly don't know. I've knit so many scarves over the years, I can't tell you exactly how many rolls were in the different patterns. Um, so sorry if you're looking for a certain pattern. I, I don't know. I don't know. The one I just finished was a three-row scarf, if that counts for anything. I guess if you do just a plain garter stitch, that's considered a one row scarf. Like if you do all a garter stitch or all purling for all your rows, that'd be a one a one row scarf. Or are you talking about like knitting just one row and calling that a scarf? I guess, I guess, I guess more like, what's your question about one roll scarves? This is better a question to ask. Or where do you want to know about a one roll scarf? Mm -hmm. 